Well, hello everybody. And today's class, as you can see, is an English summer beach. It could be anywhere in the United Kingdom, I suppose. It could be anywhere in the world. But I'm calling it an English summer beach. So, what colours do we need? Let's have a look, shall we? I have here a beautiful cerulean blue. Cobalt blue. I have a Payne's Grey, as you know, anything about me, it's one of my favourite colours. I have here an orange, just red and yellow mixed together. I've made a sepia, chocolate brown colour, straight from the tube. But then I've also made here some white, first of all, and added to that white a little bit of the orange and a tiny touch of sepia to make a sort of pale brown colour for the beach. So, where do we begin? At the very beginning, of course. So, I have my paper. Just stuck this down to a board. I just use a piece of cardboard like this. This is actually cardboard that comes as a backing for the watercolour paper that I buy in pads. And I'm using 140 pound weight, that's the name of this paper, and it's Bockingford. I will be putting some description below and I will put the list of colours there as well for you. So let's begin with a basic sketch. Well dear viewer, for you I am using my 2B pencil, just so this is a little bit easier for you uh, to see. So, let's begin, shall we? Let's start with a line in the centre of the paper, about here. This is going to be my horizon. You can use a ruler for this if you wish, but I'm just using pencil and freehand. Then, just below that, I'm going to do a second smaller line. And this will help me then to put a line going this way for the base of the rickety fence. And the line going this way. Do you notice, everybody, it, the lines do not go to the corners. They're just slightly above. Because then, if I was to draw a line upwards and then another line this way, it's giving me immediately the sense of perspective. So let's draw another line up here, and let's take a line going this way upwards. Again, giving, giving, giving us this sense of perspective here, going back. That's probably enough, we probably don't need any more than that, and where I may have gone a little bit over I can take a bit of that pencil line out either side but this is the horizon and it does go through the wooden fence as well okay just checking that it looks okay to me we're ready to begin that's all the sketch that we need so going to begin with my cerulean and probably a, probably a touch of cobalt blue. Be very careful, the cobalt blue is very strong. I, I always try to make it weaker, but it seems to always want to come out stronger. That's the nature of art, isn't it? It has its, a little bit of its own way. You know that from trying to do your own paintings with me. Okay. I think I may take some clean water and just make a blend of clean water across the very top of the sky. Now I'm only painting the first centimetre or two, just with a little bit of water. Let's take some cerulean blue, shall we? Oh no, we'll take some cobalt blue. We'll have a tiny 
band of cobalt blue. I don't want too much. That's enough. Have you noticed how I hold the brush here? It's around, it's much further back, just above halfway up. It gives me an easy glide across the paper. Washing my brush, now we'll go to some cerulean blue and we'll let the cerulean blue slightly mix with the cobalt. And then I'm doing this sort of linear, sort of linear action so the two can slightly blend together. Okay, I don't want to overdo that. That will probably be enough because now I'm going to change to a beautiful sunset orange. Let's get that ready. Here it is. This was made with a cad cadmium yellow and a touch of cadmium red deep. So, may just gently dampen the sky, but not too, too much. Just gently, because I don't want the colour too weak. Now, let's take some of the orange. Oh, yes, look at that. Yes, this is not a weak orange. This is quite strong. And I'm going to come right down here, now using the tip of the brush. A beautiful horizon. Don't worry about this here. It's going to slightly disappear. This is the important part, looking through the horizon. Oh, taking a little bit of tissue quickly and dabbing off there, because I want this to be stay white at the moment. Okay. So, now, I'm being careful here, because where the orange starts to meet the blue, we could get a slight greenish. So I'm, I'm, I'm not rubbing that into the blue. And also, I'm hoping, actually, I'm going to take the orange all the way across here. My mistake, that should go all the way across there. It is the sky in the background after all. So that does need to go all the way across. Now, you can't probably see, but the orange is still wet. Now, what I can do, I can start to introduce, while it's still wet, some of my Payne's Grey. Yes, some Payne's Grey, because the sky has got some dark clouds appearing. I'm using Payne's Grey and just the tip of the brush here, and dot, dot, dot. It's like explosions of colour in the sky. Just dotting them in. Sometimes you get these beautiful clouds that come in on a summer day. Sounds like a, a song that, doesn't it? Just washing my brush slightly and blending these colours in a little bit. That's it. So it's just softened them off a little bit and making the tops a little bit more rounded at the top here. Oh yes, this is looking good. An unusual. Now this takes a little bit of practice, I've got to be honest. So don't be too disappointed if on the first occasion when you try this, if, it, if it's difficult, because you are only learning and it takes a little bit of time, doesn't it? Just to get the feel of it. I want a little bit more down here. A few more suggestions of clouds floating across the summer sky. Perhaps it's becoming sunset, you know, the evening sunset. Oh, I want to be here. I want to be sitting here with a picnic. Right, I'm going to swap over now to my smaller brush. And here and there, I'm just going to introduce a little bit of darker Payne's Grey. This is my smaller brush. I'm just going to put a little bit of darker areas. Give it a little bit of interest. Hugh, that's looking wonderful. You've got to give yourself some encouragement. Tell yourself that you're doing okay. Remember, we're trying to get away from the very, very intrusive left side of the brain, which is a little bit of a bully. 
And it doesn't always like us to paint and be successful. Ooh, <laughs> this is looking good. See, that's the, that's the right side of the brain, the positive side. I'm sorry, it's the left side of the brain that's the negative side. But the, the right side of the brain is very positive. So we've got to get, try and get into right brain mode. I'm allowing that to softly, softly blend and trying to make the decision, have I done enough? Have I done enough? Can I stop now? I think I better had. Somebody pull the brush out of my hand, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's just give that a moment to evolve, shall we say, to spread and to gently dry. And while that is, I, 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 I want to pick your brains, please, dear viewer. I want some suggestion from you, and you might be able to give me a comment, you know, in the uh, little sub, uh, description box below where you can leave a comment for me, because many people have been asking me um, if, if they could have a private lesson with me. So I was thinking and planning to start perhaps a private art club, we could call it Hughes Art Club, or you might have a better idea for a name. You're the ones with the better ideas, I think, than, than I have, particularly when it becomes, comes to business. Um, most artists are poor, because we're not very good at business. So, although I know what I charge for my live classes, um, I charge between 15 and 25 pounds for a live class if you came to me. And that's for two to four hours. I don't think that's really expensive. Um, but that's what I charge. But I was thinking um, the individual like yourself could make a online payment. You could do that through my website and you'd be able to receive from me private lessons designed exclusively for you and maybe a choice of your subject or subjects. You may have been on holiday. You may want help uh, with how to draw the castles that you saw in Spain. So please give me a little bit of feedback. Please tell me your thoughts for and against this idea. But it does help to supplement an artist's income. Okay. I think maybe we can get back to our painting now. And here I'm going to introduce the ocean. So it's whichever ocean you may think this would be. It's probably the Atlantic Ocean. I don't know. I'm taking a little bit of cerulean blue on the tip of my brush and holding the brush on the silver furrow slightly squeezing the silver furrow so that I can get very fine line representing the ripples in the water. Now let's swap over to some cobalt blue. Again, just the fine tip of the brush. And from side to side. Look at that beautiful horizon. I don't want to fill the whole thing with colour because there are some breaking waves. Oh, that's beautiful. Now I'm definitely getting into the lovely right brain mode. And the right brain, it doesn't criticise, it doesn't count time. And it's such a fantastic rest and therapy for our busy brains. I think I'm going to put the tiniest touch of Payne's Grey in my ocean. But it really is the tiniest touch. So I'm wiping my brush at the moment. I've wiped a lot of the colour off my brush. And some tiny, tiny touches of dark. And that's enough. It's just to give the illusion of a little bit of shadow under the waves. 
Beautiful. Ah, I can breathe now. That's wonderful. Really enjoyed that. Okay, let's get some more colours in, shall we? Let's get the colour here that I made with a little mixture. I did use some white to begin with. I actually used a colour called white gouache, which is a very opaque or solid colour. It's not really a true watercolour. This is it. I'll show you. It's made by Winsor & Newton. It's a gouache. You only need a tiny touch of this. And into that, I added a touch of my orange and a touch of the sepia. And I'm going to paint all this area in with this lovely colour. But you can make your own sand colour whichever you wish, because I'm thinking that this is, this is becoming slightly, slightly the evening. So the sand is looking a little bit in shadow, and the sand is looking a little bit damp, maybe. Have you noticed how I'm going over these pencil lines here? And I'm trying to make, the only way I can describe it is a slight smile shape. I'm giving this a little bit of a curve as I go along, curving that. So we get a little feeling of the sand being slightly dipping. Now, I will put some shadows on the sand, but I might put that in a few moments when this is already dry. Let's carry this sand on a little here. Let's let it maybe meet with the orange here. And I'm just using a circular, gentle circular motion here and a gentle circular motion here because these are probably the sand dunes at the side of the beach. Lovely sand dunes. Just feel the sand between your toes. Yes, I'm happy with this. I've got to admit that at first, uh, when I was thinking, what shall we paint today? I was a little bit nervous about this one, whether I could actually reproduce it, but I think it's coming on okay. Now, I'm swapping over to my small brush and I'm going to the sepia. This is the chocolate brown color. Sepia, S-E-P-I-A. And holding the brush again like a pen on the silver furrow, I'm going to do some of the beach fence. Just coming down like this. So here's one. And it doesn't matter that it'll slightly run here. It's an, it's an old fence made of small slats of wood. And I'm just putting them in. Have you noticed how they're getting a little bit smaller as they move down, reaching down towards the beach. Oh yes, wonderful. I think I might make one here that's a little bit leaning over. It's been there for a long time. And it doesn't matter if they join in together here. Look, joining them in together. And what I do want to do is I've got a little tiny bit of colour on my brush. Shall we link them together? And if you're feeling a little bit sort of nervous, look, it's good because you get this undulating line. Maybe it's a bit of shadow here. Oh, yeah, that is looking so good. Oh, do you know, before this dries, I can now... I'll use the same brush, but let's introduce some shadow coming in to the beach and using this sort of slightly curved feel, just a slight curve. Adding a bit of water as I go just to blend it in. So there's a little bit of water on my brush now and I'm dragging that colour on a slight curve. Yeah, really pleased with this at the moment. Really pleased. Some dark in this corner. I 
and a little bit of water on my brush here. Phew, that's looking wonderful. They're supposed to be footprints going back towards the beach. Bet you can do a better job than that of, than I've done. But anyway, now I need some of the beautiful wooden fence on this side. So I can start anywhere here. And I'll just, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's a very old fence. It's been there a long time. Oh, at the end here, there are a few little grasses. Look, flick, flick, flick. Just flicking up with the tip of my brush. Flick, flick, flick. I'm going to have to stand up now. So I'm standing up and I'm moving to the side of the painting. I also need a drink of water. Cheers, everybody. Now... I can work sideways. I can go upwards if I wish, or I can go downwards. I'm finding this easier. So, these little fence posts are leading the eye into the painting. Taller at the front. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to do a few more shadows coming this way maybe, from the base of these. It's all an illusion. All painting is an illusion. There's not really a beach, it's simply colours. But what we're doing, we're doing what our ancestors tens of thousands of years ago did. We're capturing a perfect view where we feel safe and where we feel secure and that is the key i'm sharing this with you something i discovered that by capturing a perfect image we feel safe we feel safe from what's out there it used to be dangerous animals and things like that Oh, look, I've just blended that together. This is wonderful. I don't want to stop now. I am having such an enjoyable time with you, the dear viewer. I'm really enjoying this. I think I just need... I don't like my pencil line here. So I'm just going to darken that in a little bit. But no, I'm having a really good time, honestly. Thank you for joining me on this. And please do just read my little description at the bottom at the end of this about some help I'd like from you. Shall we have a few little beach grasses here? I start low down on the tape then flick up. Flick, flick, flick. Practice this. Practice it. Just darkening these posts in a little bit here. There's a, they're supposed to be in front of the sand dune. So I'm just making that a little bit darker. Wow. I'm enjoying this so much. I hope you do. Well, everybody, I don't know. I, I could carry on. I want to carry on, but I'm not going to because I will ruin it. This painting is finished apart from Les Touches Finales, Les Touches Finales, the final touch. I might just do a few more little beach grasses here, leading the eye into the painting. And now it is definitely complete. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to very gently remove the tape. Mm -hmm. 
I would advise that you leave the painting to dry for an hour or so before you take the tape off because the surface of the paper is still very wet. But I want to show you what it looks like taken off the board. And then you can buy yourself an inexpensive frame for this. Well, everyone, look at that. The English beach. I'll show you the original. And I think I've done a reasonably good job of the two. Let's move back a little bit, shall we? And we can see we've got the pair together. Yes, quite pleased with that. I don't know which is which. Oh yes, this one was the one I just did. And this one is the original. So happy painting everybody. Take care.